Well, hello, hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, listen, I was not remotely planning on going live today. Sundays are my day off. I do real work. I do writing. I do stuff. I actually have a lot of work I need to do today. Uh, but we're going to take some time out because there's something happening in real time right now that I want to make sure people see. And I want to thank Caleb as one of several people actually that alerted me to this happening in real time, because I got to tell you, I was like sitting down at my desk. I was getting ready to uh, do some writing. And then like, Four or five people DM'd me pretty much at exactly the same time saying, Carlin, you have to see this. And what they DM'd me was this video that Nicole Arbor posted last yesterday on her YouTube channel, but also that she's been tweeting about this morning. And listen, I I remember kind of I don't know Nicole Arbor. I've never spoken to Nicole Arbor. I did I don't honestly really even know that much about her except I do remember when she, there was this big controversy over her storming off the set of Candace Owens's show and Candace Owens did all these Instagram lives complaining about Nicole Arbor and Nicole Arbor is a horrible person and Nicole Arbor is a psycho and she how dare she stamp off my show. I remember that happening. But to be quite frank, because I don't know who Nicole Arbor is, I was just kind of like, whatever, Candace is complaining about something again. I don't really care. Um, well, today, Nicole Arbor released a video with receipts, and I did watch the whole thing, and we're going to watch it again, because I can't believe... I, 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 this is legitimately unbelievable. Someone sent Nicole Arbor the raw footage of her allegedly storming off Candace Owens' show. And apparently, the Daily Wire edited the footage and staged this supposed storming off because what really happened is Candace Owens used private information that she knew about Nicole Arbor with Nicole Arbor being stalked and harassed. Candace brought that up on the show, named the people that were stalking and harassing Nicole, basically admitted, Candace Owens basically admitted, and you're going to see the footage, that she had been recording her phone calls with Nicole Arbor. Now, this is important because on Friday, just but a few days ago, we watched Candace Owens on Timcast on this channel. And Candace Owens seemed to be losing her mind and clutching her pearls over the fact that Steven Crowder recorded a phone call. Well, it turns out that Candace Owens, on the footage that Nicole Arbor had, basically admitted that she had been recording her phone calls with Nicole Arbor and threatened to play the phone calls on the show. And she did all of this. Why? Why might Candace Owens do this to someone who allegedly used to be her friend? Because Nicole Arbor called Candace Owens out on participating in cancel culture. So Candace had her panties in a wad. She got her feels hurt because Nicole Arbor said, Candace, you really shouldn't be participating in cancel culture. And Candace Owens got so pissed off that she started engaging in a narcissistic malice campaign against Nicole Arbor, supported Nicole Arbor's stalkers, recorded phone calls with Nicole Arbor, and then threatened to use all that information against her. And guess what, guys? She's doing it right now in real time. In real time. If we go to Candace Owens' Twitter literally right now, Let's just refresh in case she's uh, posted any more since I since I loaded this. If we go to her Twitter right now, she is replying to Nicole Arbor and continuing to engage in a smear campaign against Nicole Arbor. Look at this. She's so insane. I'm just laughing at this. Utterly unhinged. That's not even the only things that she's posted. Um, like she she named. Candace Owens named Nicole Arbor stalkers. Where is that tweet? Did she delete it? Because I definitely saw it. I absolutely saw it. it. That's not the one I'm looking for. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Where is the tweet? Did she delete it? Did Candace Owens delete the tweet? Hang on. I took a screenshot of it, so if she deleted it, it doesn't really honestly matter. No, Nicole Arbor retweeted it. Hang on. Did she... Here it is. Candace Owens literally naming the people that Nicole Arbor has receipts that are stalking and harassing her. How many people how many people does it take before the public realizes that this woman is mentally ill? How many lawyers have to drop her, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Now, I know what's going on here because this has happened to me. This has happened to me. I've had the same exact type of thing happen. Exactly what Candace Owens is doing to Nicole Arbor right now in real time on Twitter. I've had I've had people doing this to me for two fucking years. So I know what this looks like. I know what these people do. Yes, that's exactly right. This is what Carrie Smith and her mob do to me all the effing time. It's almost it is it is textbook. So I know what this looks like. Brian, you don't know that. You know stories that have been shared with you. And if you're going to come in and be an asshole on my channel, I am finally going to block your ass. I am not fucking around. You do not get to take the side of people who are stalking and smearing people on my channel. That's going to be a new rule of my chat for today. Because I've been put through this shit. And I know what it's like. And I know what it's like. Candace Owens is actively trying to turn everyone in Nicole Arbor's life against her to destroy her career. And Nicole Arbor has receipts to prove it. And I don't want to hear anyone taking her side or explaining away. I don't want to hear it. I have been down this road and I know where it goes and I know how this stuff plays out. So what we're going to do on uh, the channel right now, and by the way, guys, I've taken pictures of all of Candace Owens uh, tweets this morning where she's basically, I mean, she's responding to Nicole, to Nicole Arbor. So I've got, I've got it all documented just in case Candace tries to uh, delete it later. And like, people are asking Candace, like, did you record a phone call with her? Because Nicole Arbor has receipts about that. So guys, here's what we're going to do. Brian, I am not fucking around. You probably think Nicole Arbor is crazy because of can't let me let me spell this out for you, Brian, because you're not together the brightest crayon on the box. And I know because I've watched her comments on my channel over the course of a really long time. The reason that people think that Nicole Arbor is crazy is because Candace Owens has been engaging in a smear campaign against her to make people think that she's crazy. I'm going to spell this out again because again this has happened to me so I know how th I know how this works. The reason that you probably think that Nicole Arbor is crazy is because of the smear campaign that Candace Owens has engaged with against her. That's why you think she's crazy. No, Brian, that's not true. This you you have heard of this. You just didn't realize what was happening and because you're not the brightest crayon in the box, you're not listening now. So you're going to get put in a timeout and if you keep coming in my chat and doing things that I tell you not to do, you're just going to be blocked and I won't have to deal with it anymore. All right. Here's what we're going to do. And guys, if I'm touchy on this issue again, it's because I've been through this shit. And I've been through it at a much smaller scale than the than, than Nicole Arbor has been through it. And and I know how it impacted me. And I know how it impacted my life. And I know that it made my entire last year into basically a constant living hell. And so, yeah, I'm going to be a little triggered when I see stuff like this. And if you want to go against me, then you don't have to be around me and I don't have to be around you. There are boundaries that I'm going to establish that I will not have people around me who engage or support this type of behavior. I will not do it. There are plenty of places on the internet that you can go where you can engage in this sort of behavior. My channel will not be one of them. This is real life. 
I know a lot of people watch this stuff and they do it just for entertainment, but this is real life. And it's not okay. And it's not acceptable. So what we're going to do is we are going to watch Nicole Arbor's video and um, we're going to watch the receipts together and I'm going to talk about what I think about it. And again, I don't know Nicole Arbor. I've never spoken to Nicole Arbor. I don't even really know that much about her other than uh, other than me seeing people say she's crazy on the internet when I've never actually seen her do anything crazy. I've never seen that. Maybe she has. I don't know. But I've seen an awful lot of people say that Nicole Arbor's crazy and they always seem to be pointing to something that's happened around Candace Owens. And I've heard that Candace Owens, I, I saw some of the Instagram lives. I saw the clips of the Instagram lives that she did to smear Nicole Arbor and to talk about how she was crazy. Mysteriously, all of the things that I've heard about Nicole Arbor seem to come back to Candace Owens. I wonder why that might be. Let's set up and watch the video. And we can find out. Alexandra says, I have never liked Candace Owens. Um, listen, man, I think that this, this, the receipts that Nicole Arbor brought in this video are so insane that I don't know. And by the way, Nicole Arbor is going to tell you in this video that the Daily Wire is supporting Candace Owens in this bullshit. The Daily Wire is lying on behalf of Candace Owens. The Daily Wire is deceptively editing things to make it seem like things happened that didn't happen and to hide things that happened that they don't think paint Candace Owens in the best light. You've also got, she's going to talk about people in the conservative movement saying, you can't talk about how much of a bitch that Candace Owens is because we need her, we need her, we need her. Let's watch the video and find out. Oh. Did I? Hang on. I'm Nicole Arbor. Hang on. Let's start at the beginning. Nicole Arbor stormed off the Candace Owens show. Did I? I'm Nicole Arbor. Welcome to the Arbor Effect. And this is the truth about Candace Owens. <laughs> I'm a vet. For those of you who don't know, um, Hang on. Honestly, I don't know why Candace is getting involved in Nicole's personal life. Candace Owens is getting involved in Nicole Arbor's personal life because Candace Owens is a narcissist and she got pissed off when Nicole Arbor publicly called her out for engaging in cancel culture. And when narcissists have things happen to them that they don't like where they feel criticized, especially if they're criticized in public, they engage in revenge strategies called malice campaigns or smear campaigns in order to exert revenge on the people who have criticized them. And they know no boundaries when they do this. Candace Owens does not know any boundary. This is why Candace Owens taped her phone calls with Nicole Arbor. This is why Candace Owens lied about Nicole Arbor on her show. This is why Candace Owens did several live streams, again, lying about Nicole Arbor, because Nicole Arbor called Candace Owens out. Candace Owens didn't like it, and so she had to engage and with, with giving uh, Nicole Arbor a little bit of punishment to put her back in her place. That's why she's getting involved in her personal life. Um, I started posting about it uh, about a week and a half ago on my Instagram and TikTok that for the last nine years, I've been a victim of stalking, harassment, and worse, by a group of men. They've stalked me. They've harassed me. They've engaged in financial abuse. Apparently so, Felipe. So Apparently many times so. I lost count. I've had to change my phone numbers. I've had to cancel shows. I've had to do so many things. And I think the hardest thing I've had to do was stay quiet, especially if you guys know my personality, for my own safety. What Candace Owens did to me during this, when I was at my most afraid, when I was terrified, when I was scared, when I was dealing with victim services, when I was hiding, when I had to have uh, personal security with me, when I couldn't sleep through the night, uh, because people were coming to stomp my teeth out because they thought I made up that I was raped. Now it sounds far-fetched, but it's not their first time doing this. One of their buddies actually murdered the girl. They were doing this too. I don't remember what happened, maybe last year. 
Her name is Maddie. She had similar things happening to her, and then he eventually killed her and then killed himself. So while I was dealing with victim services, they specifically told me not to talk about this stuff publicly because these guys are very scary. They're very scary guys who were actively like together um, executing this horror. Listen, I want to explain something for people who are saying they don't like Nicole Arbor or they don't think they think Nicole Arbor is crazy or all this stuff. It is not uncommon for people who make content to put on a character online. It's theater. It's a character. It's not real. And this is why people like me tell you all the time, Twitter is not real life. YouTube is not real life. Most of the people on these platforms are fake as hell. And a lot of them are putting on characters in order to be able to be the entertainers that they want to be. And then they are different people in real life. And by the way, I include me in this. I put on a character online that is not too dissimilar to who I am in real life, but is certainly an amped up version of who I am in real life because that's part of what this medium is. You have to put on a little bit of a character because if you were just if you didn't, it, there would be nothing for people to watch. It wouldn't be entertaining for people. And so if people do things that you think are crazy on the internet, that's not necessarily the same thing they would do in real life. And people really do need to understand this. I wonder if Mike Harlow is just a character. Mike Harlow is absolutely just a character. I will confirm that to you. He is fake as fuck online. In real life, Mike Harlow has no discernible personality at all in any way. None. He he what he does is he mirrors the character traits of whoever he happens to be around because he has no personality himself. Cuz all he wants is to be famous on the internet. Sadly, he doesn't have the personality to do it. Anyway. Or a movie like Plan against me. And I was told to continue on with my life. Don't say anything. Don't engage. We got to get you somewhere safe. And I went on the Candace Owens show after uh, she was trying to cancel Chrissy Teigen. And I said, I don't believe in cancel culture. I had made a video saying cancel. Well, Jen, thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate it. Woman, you were working overtime. I am. I have other stuff to do today, but this is important. And I, and I think that this is important because I think it's important for people to be able to identify when a smear campaign is happening. Because this stuff happens all the time online. Like I said, guys, I've had this happen to me. I have had conservatives engage in smear campaigns against me on multiple occasions where they take something out of context. They twist it to mean something it didn't mean. They plant stories in Newsweek about me. They say I said things that I never said. They say things happened that never actually happened in real life at all. And I really do think that it is important that people be able to identify when a smear campaign is in progress. And Candace Owens in real time on Twitter right now as we speak, go log on to her Twitter account and see it for yourself. She is engaging in a real time smear campaign against Nicole Arbor. And I'm going to bet you money that there's going to be more smearing of Nicole Arbor coming out this week from Candace Owens. You can you can set a clock on it. She cannot help herself because she's a fucking narcissist. So culture is for pussies and i i still believe that i do not believe in cancel culture especially with what i have experienced i had a man make up stories about me nine years ago or make up stories about being abused he made them up and let people believe they were about me until i was canceled or getting canceled and losing money and the the ramifications of that have lasted nine years of my life with not a single media outlet caring about the truth. So I want And the reason that I believe her because again, this has happened to me. I had someone publicly accuse me of sexual harassment last year when there was never any sexual harassment in in our relationship at all. I've talked about sex more with my own mother and more egregiously with my own mother than I ever did with this person and yet I'm accused publicly online of sexual harassment and grooming and stalking 
because it was all part of a smear campaign. And so again, I just blocked someone in the chat saying, Nicole Arbor is a liar. Me, 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 me. I'm not doing it, guys. I'm not doing it. This type of stuff is disgusting. And I know what it looks like. And if you get if you get fooled by these smear campaigns, man, shame on you. But if you're not open to hearing that you were wrong and to looking at receipts, then you get what you get, man. And on Candace's show to debate her on cancel culture. She wanted to cancel Chrissy Teigen. She started the hashtag cancel Chrissy Teigen. After I had supported Candace against all of my, all of my friends were like, stay the fuck away from that girl. She's evil. She pushes horrible things. And I'm like, guys, come on, give her a shot. Maybe people are just talking poorly about her because she has different ideas. I didn't want to cancel anybody. So I gave Candace a shot. I supported her as a friend. I cheered her on. She asked me to come on her show to help promote the first episode of her show. I did. She asked me for show ideas. I gave them. I believe I'm the person who told her about BLM being a scam. The company, not the, the people or the movement. Uh, yeah, I believe that came from me. I told her about that, which turned into this documentary that she did. I had supported her as a friend, but I can't support cancel culture and I can't support doing the exact opposite that you say you stand for. And you should call people out. And that's actually, that's what friendship is, is being able to say, hey, that's not right. That's not what we do here. That's not what we stand for. As I can is, what are you doing? Let's debate this then. We don't have, everything doesn't have to be a giant blow up. It can actually just be a discussion. The night before her and I have a chat, I let her scream it out. She was really upset that I would dare post anything that goes against her. Um, she took it really personally. And would so I want to make sure the timeline is clear here. Candace Owens, Candace Owens thinks Nicole Larber is so crazy and so unhinged that she invites Nicole Arbor onto her very first show for the Daily Wire. Guys, that's not real, okay? That's not real. If you think someone is crazy and unhinged, you don't invite them to be on your first show on your new network. That doesn't make any sense at all. And so what Nicole has just said is that the night before her and Candace basically had a phone call in which Candace laid into Nicole about the fact that Nicole Arbor had publicly called Candace out for engaging in cancel culture when Candace Owens led the cancel Chrissy Teigen campaign. And by the way, I called this out when it happened too. I even wrote about it in my book. You can find me in, in Actively Unwoke. Um, you can find me talking about the woke on the right, which is that I didn't like that conservatives were engaging in this smear in this cancel campaign against Chrissy Teigen two years later, just out of petty personal revenge. Not that Chrissy Teigen is a perfect person and not that Chrissy Teigen like hasn't said things that are bullshit. But when conservatives like Candace Owens come back two years after the fact to try to proactively cancel you and use hashtags like cancel Chrissy Teigen, then you're acting like the woke left. And that's not cool, man. So Nicole Arbor thought the same thing. Nicole Arbor publicly called Candace out for it. And then Candace laid into her the night before their first show to yell and scream at Nicole privately because Candace didn't like that Nicole questioned her. Now let's watch what happened. Wouldn't separate her from the topic. Let her vent and understood where she was coming from. Said, I, you know, this industry can be tough. I understand how you may have taken it as I was coming at you, not at the topic. I'm paraphrasing, but something along those lines. So it's like, okay, yeah, we'll go have our debate. We'll debate the topic and then we'll go grab dinner and we're good to go. I had confided in her about what I was experiencing with these stalkers and how scary it was. And I told her who they were. And I told her that I was genuinely afraid. The messages I was getting were so disturbing and frequent. They knew where I was. They could find me. I'd get messages saying that they knew what I was wearing and they were right when they would message me. Fast forward to her show. She instantly did exactly what the right pretends to not like when the left does. She took a comedy video and sarcasm and read it as a script out of context on purpose to try and make me look like a really bad person. Yeah, generally, if you take somebody's jokes and you read them out of context and you read them as a fucking TED talk, it's gonna sound really bad. But so this has happened to me. 
This happened to me with that cancel mob that's been smearing me and harassing me for two years. That's led by Carrie Smith. If you want more information, you can find it at survivingcarriesmith.substack.com. That's K-E-R-I. Um, this happened to me because what, what my cancel mob did is they released DMs of private conversations that they always took completely out of context. And one of the things that I was joking about with this person that was releasing these things is like, like basically like fucking James Lindsay, because one day on a private zoom call, I had played a game of like, fuck, Mary kill with this person. We played several games of it, but like, like it was just like, like fuck, Mary kill is basically where you, you name three people and you have to pick one to fuck one to marry one to kill. And I said, well, of course I'd fuck James Lindsay. He has a giant sword. And that developed into just an inside joke about fucking James Lindsay and all of this stuff. And it really had nothing to do with James Lindsay at all. It was just like, it was banter between two people that were never, that was never supposed to be made public. Well, guess what? After I had a falling out with this person and I told him no, when he didn't want to hear no, um, he started releasing our private DM conversations in which I would say things referencing that joke, like, fucking James Lindsay or I would say something like oh yeah I just got Joshua to psychic if James Lindsay would let me like suck his dick or whatever which never actually happened but it was a joke it was just banter between two people who spent a lot of time talking and I'm sure everyone has inside like jokes with people that it's like if you take those inside jokes out of context they sound psychotic but like in the course of just a, a friendship you're just bantering so they took those jokes out of context posted them all over fucking Twitter to make me look like a psychopath homewrecker I've never even I've never flirted with James Lindsay I would never do that I like I don't really even like he's not even my fucking type and it's like they did this to try to smear me to make me look bad. And it's exactly the same thing that Candace Owens did to Nicole Arbor, where Nicole Arbor like had a comedy routine. And then Candace Owens took that comedy routine and read it without there being like, like with, with, with just like a flat intonation as though she's reading something serious in order to make Nicole Arbor look like a psycho. It's like when you, this is why context and nuance is so important, guys. When you take things out of context and make them seem like something they are not, then you're doing it to smear someone. So you have to pay attention to this stuff. If, if it sounds like someone is saying something really outlandish, it's probably because the person trying to smear them is, is purposefully making you think that that person is saying something really outlandish, but it has no basis in reality. And I'll tell you what, try fighting back against that. Well, Carlin, did you really say that you wanted to fuck James Lindsay? Well, yeah, I said it in the context of a game of fuck, Mary kill when it was a joke. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't serious. But but you like you try to fight against it like but you said it it's like there there's no winning that battle once the person takes some the thing out of context to try to smear you there's no way you can win that battle because like if people want to hate you they are going to find a reason to hate you. But that was your intent was to take it out of context on purpose and prime your audience to think I'm some horrible person that wants bad things to happen to kids and teens and I'm on Chrissy Teigen's side when I was the one who brought up Chrissy Teigen to you, Candace, And you know that because I was on your podcast back when it was on PragerU and I did a whole segment about fuck Chrissy Teigen and you edited it out. You had never heard of Chrissy and doing all these things. I'm the one who brought it up to you. And then you tried to make it seem like I was on Chrissy Teigen's side. I support this bully. I support her trying to make girls kill themselves. She engaged the right and conservatives to act in the identical way to the left and everything they say that they are against. She was engaging them to do the exact same thing to somebody else. Candace Owens is the kind of person who thinks that whoever yells the loudest wins the argument. So I debated her and frankly, I crushed her. What happened next was the most evil thing I've ever even heard of. And it has disturbed me, disturbed me so much that I, I, I just had to like, I had to tell myself that this couldn't have possibly been happening. There's no way this happened, but it did. I hadn't spoken publicly about this. I had only posted one court document under the direction of the legal process. I was like, I was told just post that one thing. So people kind of know what's going on. I hadn't publicly spoken about this on purpose. This is hard for me to get through. When Candace Owens should have been a friend and helped protect me as a woman, as a friend, as anybody, as anything, as a coworker, 
she tried to out me on her show as as a victim she said the names of these men on her show and she started backing them up so the day after candace owens loses her shit against nicole arbor on a private phone call she brings nicole arbor onto her very first show on the daily wire where they're supposed to have a debate about cancel culture and then candace owens ambushes nicole arbor by bringing up the names of the people stalking her on the show to get nicole arbor to react to it in order to smear her and to throw her off after nicole had told her about this in private believing the information would remain in confidence and nicole's going to show you the raw footage of this happening which the daily wire edited out because they didn't want it to besmirch Candace Owens' good name. And victim shaming me. And not she, she wasn't just victim shaming me. She was mocking me on her show and said all of their names. And she knew, she knew specifically that I was told by victim services not to say these guys' names out loud. This is all they wanted. They wanted more fuel. They want more people to come at me. They want more people to come after me. She knew I was fucking terrified. I out debated her. So she was going to wreck my life. And she did everything she could from that moment to wreck my life. I was there for the purpose of her smearing me to help these men. The footage of me on that show was given in real time to the four men that at that moment I had a restraining order against. So check this out. This is one of the most fucked up parts of this whole thing. As this was happening in real time, Candace Owens' manager filmed the whole thing and sent it to the people stalking Nicole Arbor as Candace is throwing her under the bus on her show in real time. Jen says, I do appreciate the level of female toxicity finally being aired, Dr. K. We knew it exists, and now we know. Yeah, if you guys don't understand who Candace Owens is after this, and quite frankly, who the Daily Wire is for supporting this bullshit, then I just don't know what to tell you, man. Allegedly, it was Gina, Candace Owens' manager, standing backstage filming me and giving that footage to those men so they could post it online before the show even aired and smear me. They had a premeditated plan with Candace Owens' manager and Candace allegedly that no matter what was gonna happen on that show, she was gonna punish me for daring to debate her, for daring to have an opinion and to actually stand up for the values that conservatives pretend they have. I have to say that again so that we can understand that. Four men that I was so scared of, I had to file restraining orders because their actions were resulting in threats, credible threats to my life. You know what? To be fair, I have been, hang on, this is the one I want. To be fair, I have been accused of stalking and sexual harassment against people that I never stalked or sexually harassed. I know how this goes. I know when men on the right want to smear women they accuse them of shit like this because there's nothing that you can do to disprove it you can't prove that something didn't happen i have been through this before so i don't really give a flying fuck what those men have to say about it because nicole arbor brought receipts that we're going to be getting to Hunter Ava says, I bet that Candace will make will make this about race. I don't think that she's going to make it about race at all. I think that she's just going to attack Nicole Arbor's character. She's already doing it right now on Twitter. If super fans, like picture horror movie super fans that won't leave me alone. Candace Owens took it. And by the way, the person, the person who has publicly accused me of sexually harassing and grooming him just yesterday was smearing me on Twitter. Just yesterday. He does it almost every day of the fucking week. I have not spoken to this person in over a year. I have not spoken about this person publicly in fucking months. And he's still smearing me every single day. But he's the victim. He's the poor victim. Okay, sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. As a game. As, like, uh, let's fucking cancel Nicole Arbor. Let's get her. Let's get these dangerous scary men who have a history of domestic violence to I'm gonna help them it's so disturbing you don't out a stalking 
victim or a domestic violence victim or any sort of victim on your show as a gotcha moment. Mentally and emotionally healthy people wouldn't do that. The only segment I was supposed to be there for was that topic. I was supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one debate with her. And then she switched it to me being on the panel because she's a coward. I thanked everybody at the show. I thanked the audience. I thanked everybody on the set. Um, and I left when my segment was done. I had staff from Daily Wire chasing me out of the building as I was leaving, crying, women, crying, apologizing to me profusely, saying they had nothing to do with that. I've heard a bunch of them have quit working with Candace since. The makeup artist from set that day Look at this. message to apologize. Look at this. That's a text message. Let me get down those captains. This is a text message from someone at the Daily Wire. Hi, Nicole. This is, uh, I don't know, Nika, your makeup girl. I just wanted to check on you after yesterday's madness. I am sorry that happened and I do not support it in any way. Sending you a hug. No, I can't because I can't control the volume making it any higher. I'm sorry. What I can do is turn down. Everyone has to work together for this to work. I can turn down my microphone volume. And now you can turn your personal volume up on your computer. That is the only way I can turn that up. Guys, and let me know that she had nothing to do with that. I reached out to Jeremy from Daily Wire and was basically like, why? Why for a debate on this topic would you put me in harm's way? Why would you do that? He agreed that that didn't need to be in the episode. And basically as a trade, I had to act like I stormed off the set so that they could get ratings. So I want to I want to recap that. So after Candace ambushed Nicole Arbor, and and did all this bullshit and we're going to see the receipts guys. She's got the raw footage. She reached out to Jeremy Boring, the same Jeremy Boring who has been clutching his pearls all week long about, oh, how dare Steven Crowder? How dare he? We're just trying to do business. How dare he do this? The same Jeremy Boring that's been doing that. The same Jeremy Boring that clutched his pearls about the betrayal of a friend and all blah, 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 blah. So Nicole Arbor, after all this shit happens, says to Jeremy Boring, what the ever loving fuck? She probably said it a lot nicer than that. And Jeremy Boring said, well, Nicole, we need you to claim that you stormed off the set so we can edit the footage to make it seem like you stormed off the set. And that's what we'll do in exchange for not airing all of this other footage. How fucked up is that? The entire staff, apparently, of the Daily Wire... Or not, I shouldn't say the entire staff because apparently the makeup girl really wasn't into it. But like the leadership at the Daily Fucking Wire colluded to try to force Nicole Arbor into saying something happened that didn't happen to in exchange for them not airing the footage of Candace Owens smearing her and supporting her stalkers. That's fucked up. Roll that back in your head for a second. I'm a victim of stalking and worse. I don't have to get into all of it. Candace Owens tried to out me and what I've been through on her show put me in danger. And to preserve my safety, I had to pretend and let them get this sound bite and let them roll with this big story so that Candace can get ratings off of it. And in exchange, they wouldn't put me in direct harm's way by posting that segment. I had to make that trade. I was a girl alone in a brand new city in America, I'm from Canada. I didn't have my family and friends with me. I had to make that trade. I made some vague comment along the lines of, you know, if I try and make anything of this, then they're gonna come for me. The full force of Daily Wire smearing a stalking victim because she didn't want to be outed for her own safety. Literally just like let this stuff sink in. They're the Daily Wire threatened to come after her if she told the truth about what happened. Really think about that. The Daily Wire said, all right, Nicole, here's how this is going to go. You're going to give us a soundbite to prove, prove that you stormed off the set. And in exchange for you doing that, we're not going to come after you with all of the money that we have. How's that sound? That's the Daily Wire, guys. There were comments made that they're going to delete different parts of it, too, because it didn't make Candace look good. They don't think a female audience would like what she did to me. Um, she said out loud that she was going to cancel me 
And that kind of goes against everything that Daily Wire says they stand for. And it's hard to believe that those people, I'm going to say those people over at Daily Wire. Daily Wire, if you would like to exclude yourself from this, feel free to let me know. Mentally unwell people get obsessed with people. And it's scary. True. Dolly Parton it currently is scary. holds the record for the most restraining orders. And I'm not going to pretend it only happens to people with followings or celebrities. There are so many stories of women or men being stalked, harassed, and then something bad, re- really bad happens to them. And I was right in that cusp, in that timeline of something might happen to me. And, I was- and I'm going to say, I'm going to tell this to you guys. And my locals community knows this because I've actually done live streams that are in my locals community talking about this, where I've, I've said exactly the same thing to my locals. I've said, if I am ever physically harmed, it is because of the unhinged maniacs that I have stalking me. And I have no doubt that they're going to try to physically harm me someday. I've done, I've done streams in my locals where I break down in tears, but I'm saying there's just nothing I can do about it. No one will help me. No one will stop it. Everyone's taking their sides. I know they're going to try to hurt me someday. What she's saying is true. And the people that are in my locals can back this up in the chat. I was forced to negotiate my integrity, reality, and the truth with Daily Wire in exchange for my safety. If that doesn't sit well with you, good. I don't expect you to blindly believe me. And the good thing about consistently being a good person, regardless of smear campaigns and people who joined them over the last nine years, is that there are good people who've been looking out for me. And one of those really good people gave me the footage. I don't like that you have used your audience to engage in cancel culture. Can we call people out? Yes. Can we say that the behavior was disgusting? Yes. But I did not put on a mega hat, lose friends and family and brand deals and business and everything to stand for free speech and against cancel culture to have the same people do it. It does not work. I don't believe in cancel culture. I think it's a bad thing. You did three videos and you mentioned my name. So now you're saying, well, I mentioned your name after. I said, I think she's amazing and she's very intelligent and she's great. And I'm not against Candace. Those were my words in the video. And you know this. I will not let you make this a Nicole versus Candace issue. It's I corrected your audience to be as nasty as Chrissy. I think the reason that you were quite frankly triggered is because there's an entire series on YouTube called Surviving the Cold Arbor where four men have talked about how you haven't used them. And the entire reason you were triggered is because I used the hashtag Surviving Chrissy Teigen and most of you saw the name. Okay. Let me 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 break up the segments of the show uh, in 30 second clips so I'm not flagged for copyright by the Daily Wire. Even though this footage wasn't aired, they still might hit me with that. So I want to go really quick over some common stalking behaviors that Stalking Prevention Awareness has posted on their website. They include unwanted contact, spreading rumors, following and spying, showing up places, leaving gifts, and waiting for the victim. During this episode, Candace Owens helped my stalkers engage in three of these dangerous behaviors. Back to the clips. These are people that I have restraining orders against that are weird fans. I actually can't talk about that because there's a legal battle. It's always a legal battle when somebody's calling you out on your own BS. You're sitting here pretending. Listen to what Candace says, where Nicole Arbor is saying, Candace, stop. I can't talk about this. And by the way, Candace wasn't even supposed to bring this up publicly anyway, because this is something that Nicole Arbor told her in confidence. So, so Nicole Arbor is saying, Candace, I can't talk about this. And Candace says, well, you know, there's always a legal excuse when you're being called out on something, isn't there? What the fuck is wrong with this woman? That's not true. They're not the I think that's not true. You're lying. You can't just go toe to toe with me right now. What am I lying about specifically? Okay, specifically, there are four men. Well, actually, I can't. You know that. You know for a damn fact. You're not gonna have to end up there. We can't have this online. So at this point, I had already expressed. So you just heard her. And I know that the sound is is not necessarily ideal with this. But she just turned to the producer and said, you can't have this online. This is backing up everything that Nicole Arbor saying. Press to Candace that we can't have this online. I need to keep this private. She had already known from our private conversations I was scared of these men and actively seeking help from victim services. I lost track of how many times over the nine years this has been going on that I told these men to leave me alone, stop contacting me, stop trying to contact me, 
and that they're scaring me. I think what you just did is disgusting. You just took something personal and private that I've talked to you about. It's not private. It's all over the internet. What are you talking about? about? Brian Upchurch, Matthew Santoro, or Tommy Dex, who you brought to me on a phone call yesterday. It's on the internet. It's not private. It's not private. Why is Candace Owens even bringing this up on a show that was supposed to be a debate about cancel culture? She was bringing it up to smear Nicole Arbor because Nicole Arbor publicly said things about Candace Owens that Candace Owens did not like. I walked you guys through that entire stream on Friday with Candace on Timcast, how many times she brought it back to her reputation. It was all about her, her reputation. Steven Crowder did this. He's smearing me. He's insulting me. Buh, 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 buh. It's all about my reputation. Candace Owens only cares about herself because Candace Owens is a narcissist and Nicole Arbor stepped in it when she called Candace out for engaging in cancel culture and now Candace is engaging in a, in a retribution smear campaign in order to punish Nicole Arbor for calling her out for engaging in cancel culture. There was no other reason for this to be brought up. This was supposed to be a debate about cancel culture. Why is Candace Owens bringing these the names of these people up? There is literally no other purpose to this other than to smear Nicole Arbor. So I had already vocalized a boundary with Candace, let the show know we can't have this online. She knew that I was uncomfortable. I was visually uncomfortable and she proceeded anyway to name them name by name while her manager, I'm going to say allegedly, even though it's pretty obvious what happened, gave this footage in real time to my stalkers. Let's not make sure that in the post she doesn't say that we didn't give her a platform. Say, right, I don't want a platform. No, okay. Unfortunately, uh, being a person in the spotlight, I've had some stalkers. And right now, those, some of those stalkers, you just name them. You doing this right now has nothing to do with the point, but everything to do with you. And you're being mad at me because I disagreed with you. You're supposed to be right. I mean, I, you're supposed to be up. Well, well, with friends like those who go up and make videos of people on the internet calling you a pussy. Literally. Who needs life to send it? Literally. Just breaking up the clips again and want to point out to anyone listening on the pod that Candace is smiling while she's doing this. Candace is loving every The reason that Candace Owens is smiling as she is doing this is Nicole Arbor is giving Candace Owens what she wants, which is negative fuel. Narcissists and if you listen to HG Tutor, he's going to teach you this and I've been reading a lot of his stuff lately and it's really fucking good. Listen, like if you I hope I don't bungle how he would explain this. For narcissists whether you give them positive fuel or negative fuel in the form of an emotional reaction, it does not matter. Candace Owens brought this up because she wanted to get Nicole Arbor to react emotionally so that she got fuel. That is why Candace Owens is smiling because Nicole Arbor did exactly what she wanted her to do. I think this is what he calls challenge fuel. Yeah, and uh, I appreciate you having me on. I would love for a, a real conversation sometime because I just think what just happened there is really gross and it did need to happen. I think that we had the opportunity to be better, opportunity to be better human beings, better women, and set a better example. And I hope that we can do that. And I, I think that you're saying that now, but you should have started thinking about that before you posted three videos about me. Uh, Listen to that. Them, but, you know, none of them. Candace Owens just said that the reason that this is happening is because Nicole Arbor posted videos that Candace Owens didn't like. Nicole Arbor saying, we really should be better than this. She's being extraordinarily gracious. And Candace just said, well, you should have thought about that before you posted videos about me on the internet, because that is what Candace Owens cares about. So after the show, Jeremy apparently told her we're going to chop out that little segment. Um, but they didn't just stop at that little segment. They chopped out a lot. They chopped out where I was clearly out debating Candace on the topic. All of us women could be friends, but you refused. Where she was getting frustrated, where she was yelling on top of me constantly, where she said that she was gonna cancel me. Allegedly, Candace Owens had been taping all of our phone conversations that we had privately as friends forever. She alluded to airing one of our private conversations on her show. So just imagine that. Imagine you call someone that you think is a buddy 
and they're taping the phone call and then they're mad at you on their TV show and they're going to air your private conversation where you talked about being scared um, of these guys that you have a restraining order against. Conversations that we had privately, I'm saying. No, oh, absolutely not. Why not? We can't post our private convo. Okay, why not? Who does that? Because you're staying online. So it, 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 it just, it just sort of seems like, first you're saying, first you're saying that I'm lying. Now you're saying that I'm Which, which phone call? The one yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm saying that you're lying. Yeah, I'm saying that you're lying. Nicole. So Nicole Arbor, I don't know if you guys can hear this because I know the sound is really bad, but we'll listen to it again. Nicole Arbor is like, Candace basically just said, do I have to post our private conversations? And then Nicole Arbor is like, what the fuck? Did you record our phone calls? And Nicole Arbor is asking Candace again and again, did you record our phone calls, Candace? Did you record our phone calls? Karen, Candace doesn't answer the question. And we're going to listen to that part again because I think it's really important. Um, Jen McMahon says, a narcissist's only re resort is passive aggressiveness. No, 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 no. This is not passive aggressive. This is not passive aggressive. This is aggressive. This is not passive at all. Let's listen to this part again because I know it's really hard to hear. Talked about being scared um, of these guys that you have a restraining order against. Conversations that we had privately. I'm saying no, no. absolutely not. Why not? We can't post our private convo. Okay, why not? Who does that? Because you're staying online. So it, 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 it just, it, it just, just sort of seems. It, 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 it just sort of seems like. Right. Right. How would Candace Owens have been able to post their private conversations if Candace Owens hadn't recorded the private conversations to begin with? First, you're saying that I'm lying. Now you're saying that I'm lying. Which phone call? The one yesterday. Nicole, we have some time to pause and put in post yes or no and to no. insert things that it actually did. Did you tape our private phone call? We can move on to the next topic. I, we don't have permission to air it. Now this irony is... We're going to move on to the next topic and we don't have permission to air it. Candace Owens never said, no, Nicole, I didn't record our private conversations because that would be psychotic of me to do that. Candace Owens was recording their phone calls. Now, try to square this away with Candace Owens, and we're going to see the clip of this in case you missed it, going on Tim Pool and clutching her pearls over Steven Crowder recording a phone call. Is bananas. A day ago, I saw Candace Owens losing her shit at Steven Crowder taping a conversation between him and Jeremy from Daily Wire. Watch what Candace says about this topic. Why the hell did you record them? What, what were you doing that for? Did you think you were going to go to Fair court? Fair point. Did you think you were going to go to court? Because that's the only reason you record someone. You'd be like, I don't trust my ex-fucking wife. Pardon my language, okay? I don't trust my ex-wife, so I'm going to record this phone call for safety, right? You record it because you're nervous that there's going to be a court hearing or the police are going to find out and you've got to back up what you said, okay? Why are you recording your friend if not because you think it's going to go to court? Oh, because you think it's going to go to public and you're doing it intentionally because you know you're about to start a war. People, please use your common sense. Okay, I'm so disappointed in you and you claim to be versus you. Oh, so if you get bullied by Candace Owens, you can get through it, everybody. Candace, knowing that I was not allowed to comment or swing back, knowing that, went on a tirade for days, live streams and tweets and posts, just smearing my name. Everything from I'm not a conservative. Okay, so that's trying to get me um, away from my community within the conservative community. She's clearly not a conservative. She said that I falsely accused men. I mean, I'm a big believer that if a woman falsely accuses you, you should file a report against them. Don't just let it be like, oh, well, I survived that one. Like, she has now dropped a charge against Ryan Upchurch. I'm going to take a second to clarify this because she just said charges. Now, I have no idea what Candace Owens is talking about. There have never been, that I know of, any charges filed against Ryan Upchurch, not by me. I have no idea what she's talking about. So there were no charges. Therefore, no charges were dropped. Do I wish there were charges against Ryan Upchurch? Do I think there may be in the future? Maybe, but there have never been any charges related to me and Ryan Upchurch ever. Because she should drop the charges against Ryan Upchurch because she lied, right? Now I want everyone- Hang on, Jen says, the reason I say passive is because it's not physical. Just because something is not physical does not mean it is passive. Emotional abuse is just as real as physical abuse. Narcissistic abuse tends to be emotional abuse. It is not passive. I do appreciate the super chat, Jen. I just really disagree with you on that. I want to imagine this hypothetical with me. Imagine you're the victim of stalking, harassment, violence, domestic violence, or worse, and a celebrity 
goes onto their platform and tells millions of people that you filed fake charges, those charges were dropped and you lied. How would you feel? This is very typical of narcissistic abuse. They form teams. She's right. And they target. Yes, their victim, they do. And they just pummel them. They attack like freaking bears until there's nothing left of that person or that person kills themselves. It was told to me that that was the goal was to make me kill myself, that I would have nobody to go back to. I would be a pariah in my industry. I was talking with The Daily Wire, Babylon B, and The Blaze, all three about doing a show with them, doing comedy stuff with them. All three suddenly were gone. In fact, Seth from Babylon B was such a coward, he deleted a photo of us together. He didn't bother to ask me what happened. He just deleted the photo. And this is how smear campaigns work. They take a lie and then they spread it. People are trying to give us wallet for days, trying to give us wallet from her and she wouldn't give it back. All right, we're gonna clarify this lie once and for all. So Ryan Upchurch was staying in my guest room and he left a lot of shit in there. Like, I mean, a lot. Here's some of the stuff. Hang on, I want to acknowledge. So um, I actually have the article from, um, uh, the, from uh, like, I think the New Yorker about uh about social autopsy no new york magazine i actually have it on my desktop right now i've never read it um but i might read it at the end of this stream depending on how long this goes so i do actually have this article up right now that he left in there and it was everywhere like it was a tornado for those of you listening on the podcast i'm showing a photo of some of the stuff that he left i found in the guest room his wallet it was just sitting there i never go in the guest bathroom and the second i found it i messaged both him and his mom. Why his mom? Because he lived with her. So I was like, whoever's going to see this first, they must be worried. They don't have the wallet. There, I'm going to message. Now they know. Now, thieves don't usually reach out to the people they stole from to tell them that they stole their stuff, do they? Probably not. They also probably don't reach out and ask for an address to put it in an Uber and send it to them, do they? I did that too but his mom didn't give me an address. A couple hours later, a guy that worked on Ryan's team that I didn't really know, we had kind of said hi to each other a few times while traveling or working, but I didn't know the dude, um, asked to come meet up with me and pick up Ryan's wallet. I thought it was super strange because Ryan told me he was firing that guy and I still hadn't heard from Ryan to say that it's okay. So I wanted Ryan to either text me, call me uh, and say that it's okay or come get it himself because I wasn't comfortable just like giving it to this dude I didn't really know. I think that's pretty reasonable and I think most reasonable people would think that's reasonable. I'm not giving it to some random guy when that person hasn't told me that it's okay. Pretty normal. Later that night, I get a call from someone who said they're the police. I thought they were joking because it was so ridiculous. Uh, basically asserting that if I didn't give it back, that it was theft and that they had reported it. From the moment I found it to the moment it was back in the police custody was less than 24 hours. And it would have been sooner, but the second that you report something as stolen or whatever it is that the report was, I was told by the police I had to give it to a police officer. It's been four days of someone trying to get their wallet back. It shows that you're something's wrong, right? Like you're like not all there. Like it turns out it was totally just a PR move for him. Every time he's releasing a song or an album, this Ryan Upchurch guy notoriously causes a massive controversy with people who have large followings. Last year alone, he did the same thing to Morgan Wallen. He had done it to Luke Combs. This was unfortunately my turn. Surprise, surprise, I got a Google alert on my name when this article came out. And the article details how Ryan Upchurch makes millions of dollars using clickbait as his marketing tool. So for those of you who don't know, clickbait is when you make up or sensationalize stories. This is his marketing plan and he proudly promotes it. Feel free to read this article. It details other people he's done this to. By the way, he lost his wallet every few days. People are trying to give us wallet for days, trying to give us wallet from her and she wouldn't give it back. There was one time where I just couldn't take it anymore and I jumped into her live stream and I'm like, put me on, put me on, put me on your live. And she looked scared, like scared. Like, wait a minute, why is she on here? I thought she's not allowed to talk about this. She, what, what? She lied and said that I had blocked her. She was never blocked. I had lawyers and victim services people messaging me frantically being like, Nicole, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. We have to keep you safe. Here's a post she made lying to her audience saying that I blocked her. And right after that, I was in her freaking live stream. Yeah, anyways, Cole said, let her join. And this was a publicity sign. What was a publicity sign? My discount is Chrissy. That's the code Chrissy for tonight. How could you possibly say that we did this for publicity? Uh, discount code Chrissy. Just stop with the lies. Go dailywire.com slash subscribe. There are so many people left and right that 
are just fake. She Candace Owens is literally doing these streams, smearing Nicole Arbor and dropping discount codes for people to join the Daily Fucking Wire in the stream where she's just smearing her. That's crazy. That's insane. It get, guys, like, from my professional psychologist viewpoint, if you legitimately think someone is crazy, you don't spend hours streaming about them on the internet while giving out discount codes for people to join your website. I knew what she was doing. And she knew that I couldn't respond. She went to the domestic violence clinic and like, it's just not okay. Like, I'm sorry. I, again, like, I don't know Ryan Upchurch. I just want to show you who these men are that Candace Owens came to rescue. <laughs> Take a look. I got mad and look at my hand. I saw you get mad. I punched the table That's three cute. times. That's not cool. You're right. It's not. Fuck you. And if you see me somewhere, motherfucker, you better stay far as fuck away. And I'm not fucking playing. And you know that I ain't fucking playing. Tell everybody about God's motherfucking plan, wouldn't you? The idea that you were scared for your life is like, come on, man. I pulled out this knife and I stabbed the fuck out of the chair that I'm sitting in. This is my chair. It died last night. I'm still sitting in it. I'm gonna pull up and I'm gonna smack the fuck out of you. And me and you both know I'll pull up and smack the fuck out of you. Come over here so I can wipe your goddamn face. Oh, this motherfucking God, Shut the fuck up! Tommy Vexed. This is Tommy Vexed. Allegedly, Candace and her manager are now friends with this guy. I made the mistake of associating with him for a few weeks. He told me he was being canceled because he's a Trump supporter. Um, that seems to be like the platform that he goes on is I'm being canceled because I'm conservative and a Trump supporter. It turns out that there are many. I want to clarify this because I talked about it on the panel. And I got some of my facts mixed up, so I want to clarify this. There are many allegations of violence, domestic violence, and violence against women um, perpetrated by this man. I have heard between seven and nine restraining orders have been filed against him. A bunch of them have been filed successfully, and I know for a fact that he's currently in court again this year for another restraining order. There's even an abuse support group on Instagram called Surviving Tommy Vax. This man is terrifying. Over the last two years, he's made over a thousand, if not thousands of posts about me when I hardly knew him for a few weeks. This one in particular was extra scary because he details how easy it would be to essentially hire a hitman. And although he doesn't say my name in it, there were comments below from fans saying, is this about Nicole Arbor? And he liked it. Send this to Ryan for Nicole Arbor. And he liked it. Hold it down, fuck it, beat, yeah. bash its head in. Matthew Santoro, similar story, said that she aggressed him and then pretended she was the victim. How do you know that he made it all up? He flat out told me that it was a lie, that... I was hit in the face for the first time in my life. People do things mutually to for a promotion. Basically, he called it clickbait. I know the truth. Watching the live streams back, is so hard because it takes me right back to where I was when it happened. I understand what she's going through because again, like when I wrote surviving Carrie Smith, surviving Carrie Smith dot substack dot com, which details and shows receipts about people doing exactly the same thing to me. It was so traumatic for me to go through the amount of lies that these people had spread about me, knowing what was really happening. And like, I see it's the same thing that's happening to her right now. She like, so again, for people who think that she's crazy, she's got receipts saying that people were saying this shit about her in order to get internet clout. This happens all the time. It's happened to her. It's happened to Lauren Southern happened to me happened to a lot of people, man. And listen, I'm not comparing what happened to me on the same scale as those two because it's not on the same scale. And I thank God for that because I know how bad it was when it happened to me. And I know what that was like. And I barely made it through. So I don't know how they did this. I, I don't know how they got through it. I really don't. And I had friends calling. I had family calling. And all those people being like, what's happening? Why is she doing this to you? And I'm like, 
because she's a really bad person because there was no other answer she knew what she was saying wasn't true and it didn't matter it's too many people that don't know each other that are telling you the same thing it's too many people that don't know each other that are telling you the same thing it's too many people that don't know each other that are telling you the same thing see that they they tried to play this trick on me too they said carlin is the only common denominator here carlin is obviously the problem because she is the only common denominator here between and we're just all saying the same thing and why like how is it possible that 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 you know everyone is saying the same thing about her they did exactly the same thing to me when in fact i wasn't the common denominator the common denominator was carrie fucking smith I didn't even know some of the people who were smearing me online. I've never even spoken to some of the people who were smearing me online because I was never friends with them. I never even talked to them. But Carrie Smith did. That's the reality. They do this all the time. So if you ever hear someone saying, well, it has to be that person because everyone else, it, it, like if everyone is saying the same thing about that person, then it has to be about them. Huh? Really? All right. Meanwhile, other victims of these men were hitting me up and being like, what is Candace doing? Why is she doing this to us? Because it's not just me. It's not just me. You know, she'll, she'll go on about Epstein and Weinstein and how did this all happen? Because of fucking people like you, Candace. Because of people like you. Because you had no idea what you were talking about, but you kept talking. There's multiple victims just like, okay, we're finally going to get these guys. And then Candace Owens backs them up. First and foremost, I have never spoken to Ryan Upchurch in my life. So trust the science is the code Daily Wire. When I needed my community the most, you separated me from everybody. It's wild because like Candace Owens will lose it. If a teenager tweets like, don't mess with, I don't know, the Arabs or something. She'll be like, I'm getting threatened. For those of you who might have missed it, one of my stalkers is Jared Taylor from Black Rifle Coffee Company. After Candace did this to me, she got a sponsorship. From Black Rifle Coffee Company. Coincidence? Mm. She's not just a mean girl. She's not just the ultimate pick me, which she is. She's the opposite of everything that she pretends to be. And Daily Wire, how? How can you have Jordan Peterson talking to everybody about being a good person, living a good life, while also having Candace try and destroy them. You're full of shit. I fully expect that after this, she's going to go on another smear campaign about me, that she's going to try and spread more lies, she will. that she's going to try and watch it. She's already doing it to twist it and make it seem like something it's not, or that I've been defeated or I was called a liar and whatever. The judge said, I'm not credible and threw it all out. In actuality, <laughs> the judge hadn't talked to me. I'm not going to get into all the details of the legal stuff right now, but what I can tell you is that at no point have I been beat oh. in court. I want to show you I guys something. A judge said I want to show you guys something. I told you Candace Owens was going to do this in real time. I want to show you guys this. She tweeted this 15 minutes ago. We're going to go back to the video in a second. 15 fucking minutes ago. In a just world, people who make false allegations would be made to serve out sentences for the crime they false accused. False accuse someone of rape, go to prison and serve out a rape sentence. False accuse someone of a hate crime and serve out a sentence for a hate crime. She's doing this to smear Nicole Arbor. She is swim. I defended Ryan Upchurch on my show. When we had her on, she accused him, the fourth man, and he all he had, and he had all the evidence proving this. Well, apparently not. He eventually won in court against her lies. That's not true. Look up all public information. She is swim fan status. doing it right now in real time but i owe any of these people money it's just lies that they make up at no point has a judge thrown anything out different parts have been moved dissolved and paper moved around all to get towards trial and this is just legal games even if a judge called me a liar which by the way this may come as a shock but there are victims every day who don't get justice. The justice system is not even where anywhere close to perfect. Candace Owens is exactly what conservatives say that they're not. And the truth is, without middle-aged white guys feeding her talking points, she crumbled. She doesn't know how- I agree with that, but I want to I want to just address something Caleb says in the chat. Unfortunately, it seems no one believes you when you try to defend yourself. That's exactly the problem. 
I tried to defend myself when this was happening to me and people wouldn't believe me or they wouldn't say anything or they would say, Carlin, you should just ignore it. It'll go away. But while I was ignoring it, the smear campaign got worse and worse and worse and worse. And then they came after my family and then they doxed my friends and then they doxed my house and it got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And there's nothing you can do. There really is nothing you can do. And it is, I cannot even explain how alone you feel when it's happening to you. I mean, like if you guys have seen videos of me crying on the internet, like it's because it was in the midst of this happening to me and I didn't have anything. I didn't know what to do. I was going to quit multiple times because all my mob wants from me is to get me to shut up. They say it over and over and over again. They say, we just want, like, just shut up, Carlin. Just shut up. Just delete your accounts. That's all it's going to take for us to stop. And no one helps you. And no one's there for you. And all of a sudden, everyone's calling you crazy when you didn't do anything. It had been done to you. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. Jen says, I seriously don't need a reboot of Heather's called Candace's. Unfortunately, we're living it. Oh, yeah. This happens every time. This happens all every day. How to attack or debate a topic without attacking the person. Someone has to tell her that yelling a personality doth not make. The digging up dirt thing. Like, grow up. Grow up. She was dropping coupon codes while doing a smear campaign against me. In the middle of the smear, she would drop coupon codes. If that doesn't tell you what her intent was, I don't know what will. Let's talk about anti-slap suits really quick. Generally used against people who've been victims of smear campaigns. So imagine this, your abuser spreads everywhere that you beat up your kids, you hate your kids. Maybe they're trying to win the kids in the divorce. They spread that you hate your kids, you're a horrible person, you're making porn on the side. Did you not know you're making porn? You're making porn now. They said it on the internet, they're doing it. So to combat this form of narcissistic abuse, which is what's- My, my stalkers called me a drug smuggler on the internet and reported me to the police in the UK for smuggling drugs. Do you want to know what the drugs were? It was a vape pen that I had in my bag when I went to London. To, for that, I got accused of drug smuggling. For making a joke about sex, I got accused of being a groomer and sexually harassing people. It's real. What she's saying is real. Your campaigns are, your lawyer files a court injunction, and a defamation suit. The purpose of doing that is to try and slow down the abusers because if those rumors get out about you, there's no telling how much it's gonna damage your business, your reputation, your children, your family, your mental health, and whatever else that might damage. As we know, when things get online, it's really difficult to get them down. Now, what I've observed is bad guys go in and file what's known as an anti-slap suit. They claim it is their first amendment right to say whatever the heck they want, even if it's lies, even if it's damaging you, even if it's putting you in harm's way. See, and I don't really think the founding fathers fought to make America free so that you could destroy the lives of people who challenge you, you psycho. Candace Owens, the racist man's MLK. Remember the bad guy at any point could stop harassing you, leave you alone, stop spreading that you're beating up your kids, but they don't want to. They want to hurt you. An anti-slap suit is meant to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. However, in the last few years, it has been weaponized by abusive people to not only silence, but financially abuse their victims. In my personal belief, this is exactly what Candace Owens did to Kim Clasick. Only a couple weeks after what I Candace agree. did to me, she did it to another woman, a conservative woman who'd run for office. Candace made wild claims against this woman, like really damaging. There was claims in there that revolved around escorts and sex work and her being a madame and all sorts of really hurtful things. And Kim did exactly what we're told to do. You file that defamation suit. And Candace did the bad guy move. Now, this is really important. A lot of really big conservatives knew what Candace did to me. A lot of people have asked why I haven't filed the defamation lawsuit against the people who defamed me. I've talked to about about it. I've talked to multiple lawyers about it. I would win. The, I'm pretty sure that I would win the defamation lawsuit if I filed it. The problem is that it is ungodly expensive to fight a defamation lawsuit. And I'm I'm reasonably sure that the people who have been defaming me want me to file it just so they can do this anti-slap bullshit against me. Even though I don't think they'd win, it would still be on. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. It would cost me to do this. I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend on a lawyer to do a defamation lawsuit. I would rather use that money for other things. 
And so it's like you get stuck between. And, and by the way, the people who have been defaming me, they don't have money to pay out a settlement. So even if I won, there's no money there. I would never recoup the expenses of it. And so the very system prevents me from going after the people who have defamed me mercilessly online, defamed my friends, defamed my family, doxed my house. No, it doesn't because they did defamation per se against me because they assume, they they accused me of serious crimes like pedophilia. They accused me of being a pedophile. That's real. That they have no evidence that I committed. They accused me of sexually harassing people when there has never been a single sexual harassment complaint filed against me. So no, this is not correct. I really detest when people on the internet, by the way, give legal advice when I have talked to lawyer after lawyer after lawyer after lawyer after lawyer about this. You guys aren't helping when you give bad legal advice. I'll tell you that. But that might be a reason that a person can't do a defamation lawsuit. And exactly what, what Candace Owens did, did to Kim Klasick. And I remember this at the time. I fully supported Kim Klasick at the time because Candace Owens did defame Kim Klasick publicly, overtly, aggressively. Just because you hear an internet lawyer say something doesn't mean you know about the specifics of my case and what I have spoken about with multiple lawyers and you giving bad advice on the internet is going to lead to people doing things that is going to cost them a lot of money. Just because you heard an internet lawyer say something once does not mean you really understand the ins and outs of it. Do you understand? And the reason I'm aggressive here is because I've had to deal with this as well. Do you know how many people have done this to me? In the last year, Carlin, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just do that? Oh, here's all the reasons you can't do this. Here's all the reasons you can't do that. You don't know. It is mind boggling. It really, really is. But Candace Owens defamed Kim Klasick. Kim Klasick filed a defamation lawsuit. Then Candace Owens like instigated this anti slap bullshit, which would have cost Kim Klasick a lot of money, which is why these people get away with this stuff. And they begged me. When I say beg, I mean begged me not to tell the truth, not to make a video about Candace, not to talk about it publicly, not to go on Megyn Kelly and talk about it. They begged me. They're like, we need her for the movement. We need her. She's worth so much money to us. We've pumped so much money into her. We need, we need Candace. You can't go after Candace. Please don't go after Candace. And then I saw Candace go after Kim Klasick, a mom who's just trying to make Baltimore better. She did the same thing to her. And because Candace has apparently an unlimited legal budget to bully people online, that meant Kim suddenly had to pay probably a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars in legal fees to fight that. It's a frivolous lawsuit usually used to drain the bank account of your victim. It literally gives gasoline to the bullies. And that's what Candace did. And it was costing her so much money to fight this frivolous lawsuit that Candace put on the side that they eventually reached a settlement where Kim would just pay her legal fees and they would walk away, call it a day. Candace did not defeat Kim, but she posted as if she did. This woman is just a menace. She's just fucking evil. I have so much to say, but I know I gotta end this somewhere. I want you guys to know that this experience rocked my faith in humanity. Like genuinely, genuinely. I can't ignore that there's a common denominator in all of these people that have done horrible things to me. They're all conservatives and they're, as much as I mm -hmm. don't want to admit it, there seems to be a running theme of being disgusting to women, of not caring about the truth. Yes. When you come with the same venom for child exploitation and human trafficking as you do Taylor Swift's new album, you probably are just an angry person. Real nice. Nice. All of this to say, I would like to formally announce my retirement from all of this bullshit. I don't want to live a life that's dictated on me hating people based on who they vote for or who they love or what they look like. The truth is I have no idea what conservatives stand for anymore. We're Christians, but we don't act Christ-like. Cardi B twerking yep. is wrong and disgusting. But Andrew Tate running a digital brothel is okay because he says our talking point. Exactly. You know I love Michelle Obama. I think she's awesome. I think Michelle Obama is the shit. And I like Oprah and I like people. I genuinely like people. And I had to really do some soul searching and be like, wow, where have I been at Candace Owens? Have I made mistakes along the way? Yeah, I have. <laughs>
In fact, I didn't even know that some people are fat. Get this, throw back to the first big, big video. I didn't know that some people gain weight after severe emotional trauma to almost build padding. I didn't know that. That's true. I, didn't, I get why some people were especially upset at that video now. I only learned that in the last year, but you can't get mad at me for not knowing what I didn't know. Please teach me. But if I would have known that, I definitely would have angled that a bit differently. So I don't, I don't want to be part of this team that is full of venom and hate and it has fun smearing people every day. And every day is another fight. And who can we meet in me? Like the, the, the mm-hmm. word grifter is thrown around, but I don't even think you guys know the, the definition of it. By definition, grifter is these people like this that are daily picking fights with people just for the sake of fighting, just to get one up, just to feed their ego a little hit of dopamine so that they can get through to the next day and go narcissistic abuse on somebody else. I'm not interested. Candace tried to insult me by saying, you're not one of us. And this experience has taught me you're right. In the words of Blink-182, I don't ever want to. I don't ever want to be you. And for those of you who instantly knew that's not Blink-182, you are my people. (laughs) So instead, in the words of My Chemical Romance, your misery and hate will kill us all. If conservatives aren't all evil, cruel, sexist, vindictive people, show me you aren't exactly what the left says about you. Show me. Show Mm -hmm. it to me. Show me in the comments. Show me in how you treat me after this video. Show me in how you treat people who have a different opinion than you. Because this whole like seek and destroy everybody who's different than you thing is really tacky. I don't want to be that. I'm out. I don't want to play. Your game is stupid. I'm out. For all the people who want good vibes, come on over. I welcome everybody. I'm Nicole Arbor and this was the Arbor Effect. Go, go, go team. So I'm going to tell you this. Like I agree with that. Everything Nicole Arbor said in that in that last part of it. Because like I have been saying the same thing for two goddamn years. The conservative right is doing exactly the same thing that they are accusing the left of doing. It is exactly the same thing. They don't ask Christ-like, act Christ-like. They engage in cancel culture. They spread lies. They spread rumors. Not everyone on the conservative right, but a lot of your influencers engage in this bullshit. They've done it to me. I have documented. I have documented repeatedly on this channel. Over the last few years, every single time this bullshit has been done to me. I've documented a lot of it in real time. Oh yeah, they're doing it to Eliza Blue right now. They're doing it to her right now. Why? Why? Eliza, like, Eliza may have a past, but guess what, guys? We all have pasts. Every single person who is on the internet has a past. And yet you guys keep going after people and canceling them again and again and again. And if it wasn't one thing, it would be another thing. Jen says grifters used to be called con artists. Yeah, I wish they were. I wish they were still. All right, guys, I want to read. Uh, I want to read this story about social autopsy. Now, I have never I, I've heard about this but I've never actually looked into it, but I do think it's relevant to what we're talking about right now in regards to Candace Owens being a raging fucking lunatic. And listen, I'm going to say this too. When I, when my story first went viral on the internet, for those who don't know, I very publicly left the left in February of 2020. I was the person who wrote an article about being a Trump supporter, or being a, a Democrat of 20 years, going to a Trump rally. And then I, I deregistered from the Democratic Party three days later. Um, and, and, and so when, and my story went viral on the internet and when that happened, um, a lot of people said, she's just doing this for cloud. She's just doing it for cloud. She's a grifter. She didn't really leave the left. And I didn't understand it at the time because I knew my story was real. I was fucking there. Like I knew it was real. Like I've documented all the receipts from it. And, but all these people were saying it and I really didn't get it. Well, guess what? I understand now why they did that. Because there have been so many people who have claimed to be former leftists, former Democrats who left the left and all of a sudden became a conservative. Now, in my case, I never became a conservative and I never adopted the right's talking points, which is why they came after me. 
because I didn't play their game. They tried they tried so fucking hard to get me to play their game. They used me for in the entire year of 2020, that fucking Prager U video, biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. And and like they used me and used me and used me. And I think that they really thought that they were going to get me, but they never did because I never bought into the bullshit and I never wanted to be famous on the Internet. But Candace Owens is someone who wanted to be famous on the Internet. Carrie Smith, someone who wants to be famous on the Internet. People people it is it is legitimately true that. People will say that they left the left in order to become famous on the Internet. That just happened not to be the case with me because I actually really left the left because I legitimately hate cancel culture and I never engaged in it when I was on the left. And, you know, turtle, I'm not reading the last part of your name. Defamation per se means you don't need to prove damages. You still have the burden proving malice instead of negligence of a famous person. Yeah, turtle, as I have repeatedly explained to people, I have that. And again, stop. I don't even care if you paid me a super chat. Super chat. Stop giving legal advice on the internet you guys really fuck up people's lives when you give shitty legal advice on the internet you are not a lawyer you are not familiar with my case you are not one of the dozen lawyers that I've talked to about this situation. I don't need your input on it and other people don't need it either. I don't know why people have to nose into other people's business to give them legal advice when they do not understand any of the components or what has gone on behind the scenes at all. It is extremely tone deaf to do this. I understand you probably mean well. But it does not help. It doesn't help. And so this is this is going to be your typical conservative. The fact um, that she liked Michelle Obama tells me everything I need to know about her. That's your typical conservative grifter right there. Enjoy your block, bitch. All right, guys, let's read this article and find out more about social autopsy and uh, Candace Owens past. And, and the reason I think that this is important is like, you know, I have noticed repeatedly these people who claim to have left the left. And then they all of a sudden become conservatives. They still act like fucking leftists. So they don't leave the left. They're just doing it to grift. Nick says, ask, uh, some ask for advice. I tell them to see a lawyer. Exactly. That's really good advice, Nick. All right. Really? Show proof of that. Or is that just what Candace Owens told you? See, you're going to see stuff like this. We literally just saw the receipts. And people like this, are, this is how this stuff picks up steam, guys. We literally just saw the receipts. And now people are like, well, you know, those receipts aren't real. Here's what really happened. You don't know. It is so infuriating. The strange tale of social autopsy, the anti-harassment startup that descended into Gamergate trutherism. Now, this is by Jesse Single, who I have absolutely zero respect for at all, because Jesse Single and her part and his, her, well, her might have been Freudian, nice Freudian slip there. His partner, Katie Herzog, um, are absolute lying, gossip mongering cunts. By the way, did you guys know that Katie Herzog was trolling around on Reddit looking for gossip? about Elijah Blue. I know that because I randomly found it last night. I found Katie Herzog posting in my chemical romance forums last night on Reddit looking for gossip about Elijah Blue from back when she dated Gerard Way. Like how disgusting is that? You're you're you claim to be a journalist and you're you're running around gossip looking for, like, you're running around Reddit looking for internet gossip to report as fact? That's disgusting. Everyone, like, if any of you support Katie Herzog, bro. 
The, it's absolute. And by the way, Katie Herzog did a whole hit piece podcast about me that I I literally debunked every single part of it. And when I sent her the actual receipts, it was never acknowledged. There was no retraction issued. She just blocked me on Twitter. I debunked literally every single component of her hit piece against me using publicly available information she had access to. So don't tell me this is the first time she's done something like this because it isn't. Trolling Reddit for gossip that you are reporting as truth. Are you fucking insane, Katie Herzog? And there's proof of her doing that on my Twitter. I posted it last night. Anyway, let's read this thing about social autopsy. If you stumbled upon the Twitter account, Social Cor Coroner, over the weekend, you might have immediately assumed it was being run by the, a type that's become sadly familiar online, the hardline Gamergate. If you spend enough time on Twitter or Reddit, you run into these folks occasionally sitting on the far end of the obser uh, obsessiveness bell curve. So isn't that funny that Jesse Signal is saying that people on Reddit sit at the far end of the obsessiveness bell curve when his partner, Katie Herzog, is literally going to those people asking them for gossip? These are the dudes, and they're mostly dudes, convinced that a cabal of feminist social justice warriors or SJWs are controlling everything from behind the scenes, vicariously targeting their enemies and punishing them for not towing an imagined wacko progressive line. Two common tactics of this sort of obsession, and broadly speaking, two of Gamergate's uh, biggest bet noirs, are the anti-harassment advocates Zoe Quinn and Randy Lee Harper, and indeed, they are exactly who Social Coroner went after, and we see right here okay so social autopsy is social coroner got it um for a large chunk of the weekend the account came hard at both women implying they were part of a conspiracy that was about to be unmasked at times the account sounded like it was tweeting from a besieged bunker with the armies of quinn and harper closing in zoe or randy and zoe stop sending your clowns to try to scare us with legal uh legal blank threats um if you're going to serve us do it already it could be unsurprisingly hard to follow, but Social Coroner repeatedly asserted its superiority over the alleged tormentors. I consider the constructs of our society thoroughly and often. You, then you know well enough that you do not know any of the details about what happened to me at all, and you are giving evidence out of turn, and so now you're going to get blocked goodbye. No fucking whining in my chat when I tell you to stop doing something. I swear to God. I don't know when people are going to learn these rules. They're not hard. In fucking furiating. Let's see. I consider the... Con Where are we talking about Candace Owens? Hang on. These sort of claims are a dime a dozen on Twitter. On the other hand, Social Coroner is the official account of Social Autopsy, the anti-bullying startup that launched its Kickstarter last week, and the rant against Quinn and Harper garnered it hundreds of new followers. Quinn and Harper are very strange targets for the organization like this. Generally speaking, there is almost zero overlap between the sorts of people who publicly and repeatedly denounce the two particular women and sorts of people concerned with ending online harassment. What the hell is going on here? Kumbaya, I figured Dr. K needed a hug, a virtual one, not my best hug. Usually I would grab you around your... Well, thank you for the hug, Jen. I do uh, I do appreciate it. I really do. Yeah, proper lawyers don't give advice on YouTube chats. And when you're using an anonymous YouTube handle, I am not incredibly um, inclined to trust anything that you have to say. Anyone can claim, I just graduated from law school and I'm taking the bar. In fact, that psycho, Lauren D. Laguna, who has been harassing me incessantly to try to get me to come on her channel, does that all the time. So maybe that was uh, Lauren D. Laguna's secret account. She's a Stay away from that bitch, by the way. That bitch is legitimately crazy. It's a strange, slightly complicated uh, story, but it's also a useful cautionary tale about what can happen when newcomers wander into the weirder, angrier corners of the internet without first reading a tour guide or two. Social Autopsy launched its Kickstarter campaign on April 12th, which is my birthday. That's kind of ironic. Um, billing itself as a way to catalog the abuses of trolls and cyberbullies. Its founder is Candace Owens, a 26-year-old woman with a background in finance who has a painful first-hand experience with bullying. 
When she was in high school in Sanford, Connecticut, a classmate and former friend left racist death threats on her phone, sparking a local scandal that came to ensnare the mayor and his son, the latter of whom was in a car with the perpetrator at the time that he threatened Owens. All right, so now we're getting into Candace's past. It's clear that these events had an effect on Owens. The age of technology and social media has slowly disintegrated individual accountability and consequences which are devastating. Really, Candace? Really, 26-year-old Candace? Please tell us more about individual accountability. Interesting. Inter oh, so you admit that you lied in the last chat, Billy Jill. Oh, so you admit that you lied to try to smear someone literally as we're looking at receipts on the screen showing that you're a lying fucking liar. And this, folks, is why you should never believe people on the internet because they will say something that is a direct and provable lie. And then later they'll come back with, oh, no, no, no. What I really meant was this. What I really meant was this. And then when we call Jill out on lying this time, she's going to come back and say, no, no, no. I really meant another thing. I really meant another thing. And she's going to keep doing it, doing it, doing it, and doing it, and doing it. Thank you for proving my point, Jill. I appreciate it. Uh, I think Viva is a sellout. That's what I think of him. And I'm and I re I'm really disappointed saying that. I really am. But Viva, to me, is a clear sellout at this point. What am I drinking today? Coffee at the moment. It's just coffee. Nothing alcoholic. She says in Social Autopsy's promotional video, which then rolls news coverage of a series of suicides that may have been caused in at least in part by bullying. She then explains what Social Autopsy will do. We attach people's words to their places of employment and anybody in the entire world can search for them. Oh, isn't that nice? That doesn't sound like doxing at all. What we are doing is figuratively lifting the mass up so nobody can hide behind, you know, Twitter handles or privatized profiles. It's all real and it's all researchable. You can say you can still say whatever you want to say on social media, but you have to be willing to stand by your own words. That is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Anyone who thought this was a good idea it was directly supporting cancel culture. Now, this was back in 2016, so we knew a lot less about cancel culture in 2016 than we do now. But this is Candace literally, like, making a business out of canceling people. That's nice. According to Kickstarter, the company is seeking $75,000 in funding and hopes to launch with 150,000 profiles. It is Lauren D. Lagooner. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew this was Lauren D. Laguna. Thanks for the money, Lauren, you absolute fucking psychopath. Did I call that shit or what? Hang on. One sec, guys. Okay, she's hidden from the channel. Excellent. The pitch to anyone seeped in the world of social media in 2016 is odd, if not ominous. Owens is unclear how she plans to do any of the things she says she will, and listening to her description of a site that lifts masks and connects people's names to their employers, it's hard not to come to the conclusion that social autopsy's goals uh, include de-anonymizing people online and making it easier to dox trolls and harassers. And that's exactly how the Kickstarter pitch was interpreted by most of the people who saw it. The freakout was both immediate and predictable, a site that allows users to report people for entry in a database that will portray them as a troll or a cyberbully has obvious potential of all kinds of abuse. Indeed. 
In the days that follow, a rare degree of unity was achieved between various opposing factions in the endless internet culture wars. Gamergate and anti-Gamergate advocates uh, alike agreed that this was a very bad idea and that Kickstarter's lack of details when it launched that there was little sign the company had given any thoughts to the potential privacy concerns, nor to the countermeasures against the inevitable inevitability of reports levied against innocent people suggested it was a half-baked, potentially dangerous service that no one really wanted. The response to social autopsy seemed, in short, like a clear instance of the internet, that is, the market for the service itself, rearing up and issuing forth a uh, guttural, ear-splitting, no thanks. But that's not how Owen sees things. Instead, she's convinced that the current online shaming she's experiencing, including death threats and violently racist language delivered to her company's inbox, are the results of a conspiracy, possibly far-reaching one, spearheaded by Quinn and Harper. She thinks they, and particularly Quinn, are the ones sending her nasty emails. Oh, so this again, this is this is this is Candace Owen showing her narcissism from the very beginning. Wow. She thinks they, and particularly Quinn, are the ones sending her nasty emails or that they started the hysteria, which led to the inundation, at least. She also thinks that they're operating a network of sock puppet social media accounts trying to take down social autopsy, all because they're afraid of what the nascent company will reveal about them when it's up and running. Do you know what's funny about this is the people who are stalking and harassing me say the same thing of me all the time. They are convinced that I have probably hundreds and thousands of sock accounts. In fact, they just did this to me yesterday. They are convinced that literally everyone who supports me is me running a stock, a sock account. They're convinced that anytime someone says anything against them, it's just me running a sock account. It's like, <laughs> I don't have them. I do have sock accounts, but I don't actually use them to tweet anything. I use them to mo mostly monitor the psychotic uh, raving lunatics that stalk and harass me every day, but I don't actually use them to tweet anything. Yeah, exactly. They they think bot is me. They think half of you guys in the chat are obviously me. Yes, you got you guys are all me. Congratulations. They will actually say this shit publicly on the internet. They just did yesterday. So apparently, like, so one of them, I found I have to monitor what they say online because I want to know if there's like any crazy like rumors or accusations that's going to get slung about me on the internet. So apparently yesterday, one of them like engaged in like an online, like an inner, like a YouTube, like live stream or something that like whatever. And apparently someone in my community found out about it and like chatted into this person asking them questions and they thought it was me. And then they took screenshots of the chat and posted it on Twitter like, insinuating it was me and now they're all like in a ruckus over oh carlin did this under a sock account i'm like i was literally doing work while this was happening i didn't even know there was a live stream yesterday but okay yeah sure it was me there are, everyone is me Woo! anyway well, welcome back, Michelle. Guys, please mount that like button if you haven't, uh, well, not the like button regardless, but definitely if you haven't been here in a while, please check and make sure you're subscribed if you want to be. Yes, I am literally everyone on the internet. <laughs> there is no actual evidence that any of this is true. Same with me. And yet Owens, thrust into an internet culture war she knows nothing about coming in, has misinterpreted in a particularly cringe-worthy way various bits of mundane evidence as implicating Quinn and Harper. She has accidentally become a true believer in a common variety of Gamergate conspiracy, all without really knowing what Gamergate is, and she's convinced and she and she's convinced she's about to break the whole thing open in a big blog post she plans to publish on her website degree180.com later today. It all started with an email from Zoe Quinn to Owens the evening of the Kickstarter launch. For the uninitiated, Quinn is the original victim of Gamergate. Her ex-boyfriend, uh, Aaron, I don't know how to pronounce that, jo Joni, uh, effectively launched the online movement with a lengthy, lengthy, vindictive blog he published about her in August 2014, leading to a cascade of harassment and death threats that have never fully abated. 
She has expressed concerns about social autopsy on Twitter and is and soon an autopsy intern gave her Owen's personal work email address. Quinn is a co-founder of Crash Override Network, a crisis helpline advocacy group and resource center for people who are experiencing online abuse. With the exception of a few instances in which she responded to an individual claim below, Quinn said in a DM statement she did not want to comment on the particulars of her interactions with Owens. It's unfortunate that the public conversation that could have been about the project and the underlying merits of different tactics of fighting against online abuse has been largely hijacked by people acting in bad faith, hoping to cause a spectacle, the statement read in part, and I have no interest in allowing myself to be used for that. Huh. Doesn't doesn't that sound kind of like exactly what Nicole Arbor just said in her video? She's like, fuck you guys. I don't want to be involved in this anymore. Doesn't that kind of sound like what Nicole just said? It's almost like Candace Owens never really changed. Shortly after Quinn initiated email contact, the two women were on the phone. It didn't go well. Owen said she found Quinn pompous and that she didn't think Quinn's concerns, which varied from the potential of children getting doxxed by social autopsy, to the threat she thought Gamergate posed to, uh, to Owens herself, were well-founded. Quinn, Owens t also told me, said she was calling on behalf of a group of anti-bullying organizations, but wouldn't say which ones. Things got increasingly heated, and then Quinn broke into tears and said something like, I don't think you understand. This is going to ruin everything. Owens said she found it odd and suspicious that Quinn started crying, especially given that she was calling as a representative of various organizations. After they got off the phone, the two had a brief email correspondence, which culminated, Owens said, in Quinn asking her not to contact her again. In a DM conversation, Quinn acknowledged that she had teared up but denied saying anything that Owens could have interpreted as this is going to ruin everything. She also denied having claimed to be speaking on anyone's behalf. After 45 minutes, uh, about 45 minutes after Quinn sent her final email, Owens said she started receiving racist hate mail at the main Kickstarter contact email for social autopsy. At her own personal email, the first email she received simply said, words that I'm not going to say. It soon became a deluge of harassment, some of it violent, and many of the fake email addresses that harassed users contained words like gaming or a variation thereof. I spent the entire night being harassed and couldn't even answer the real questions from people that were coming from our Kickstarter campaign. Here are some of the messages she received, which are quite graphic. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yep, that's pretty typical. By the time I spoke with her on Saturday night, Owens had convinced herself that it was Quinn sending her at least some of the harassing notes. For one thing, she found the fake handle suspicious. Gaming was an industry and a community that I had, prior to talking to Zoe Quinn, no idea about. They were not on our radar. It also seemed to be a, a little too pat that Quinn had warned her there would be a wave of harassment then. Viola... There was a wave of harassment, especially given the Kickstarter had been operating for the better part of a day when nay a critique from haters. I pressed o Owens on this. She really thought Quinn had sent her the extremely derogatory note and other over-the-top hateful ones. She sent or knew who sent them 100% undeniable. The belief seems to hinge almost entirely on the fact that there were abusive emails coming in after she spoke with Quinn and that both Quinn and some of her notes mentioned gamers. This is exactly the type of paranoia that narcissists have. I'm sorry. This is exactly what's happened to me. It is They are completely paranoid individuals that convince themselves of things that are not true. And I don't know who, who the Quinn person is. And I'm not saying she's a saint either. Because I, I quite frankly don't really give a fuck who she is. I care about Candace Owens' behavior. Owens says she woke up furious the next day and saw she had received an email from her personal work account that Quinn had been given. Which to me said, red flag, this is Zoe Quinn. It should be pointed out that Owens' work account is not hard to figure out. It's probably like... Candace at socialautopsy.com or something like that. 
the email thread uh, linked to a thread on 4chan's uh, pulp. It was fucking 4chan which is notorious for its reactionary politics and offensive trollery in which users teed off social autopsy and what a bad idea it was. So don't say no one warned you, the author that email wrote, but seriously, you need to take time to read the whole thread. Do not dismiss this. It will only hurt you in the future if you do. Soon after that, Owens noticed someone had posted on social autopsy about social autopsy on Reddit as well. And soon after that, someone had created a fake social media account on Twitter, social, uh, social with an I autopsy, with a capital I instead of an L to trick people. Owens attributed all of this to Quinn and her allies. Yes, everyone is me. It's true. It's true, Carrie. Everyone is me. They're all Spartacus, Carrie. Another big piece of evidence Owens highlights as proof of a conspiracy to take down her company is the open letter to social autopsy posted on Medium by well-known Gamergate critic Randy Lee Harper. In that letter, Harper, a frequent Gamergate target and anti-harassment advocate herself, tore into Owens for wandering into a situation she didn't fully understand. Harper noted that at one point, Owens referred to Quinn as a Gamergate leader, this kind is kind of like referring to Obama as a tea, big Tea Party activist. Harper didn't hold back. I'm telling you my credentials so you can understand where I'm coming from. When I tell you unequivocally you are a goddamn train wreck, she wrote at one point. Later, you are a fucking idiot. Then, referring to the fact that Kickstarter suspended funding for social autopsy, you blamed your Kickstarter getting shut down on trolls. You're wrong. That was us. As long as you're willing, uh, willfully harming other people by creating shitty, uninformed products while kicking the shit out of anyone that tries to help you, we're going to shut you down. Isn't that nice? Kind of seems like Gamergate people were actually engaging in cancel culture against, wait for it, Candace Owens. Which doesn't mean Candace Owens is good, by the way. It just means they're bad. There we have some more reing on Twitter. To Owens, this level of anger just didn't make sense. There had to be something else going on. I started piecing it together, and I was like, oh my god, this is actually who these people are. This is crazy. To find out more, she started researching Quinn's and Harper's names. Quickly, she collided headfirst with a key point of Gamergate orthodoxy. Many online harassment victims, particularly professional victims like Quinn and Harper, are making up or exaggerating the harassment against them. Oh, so this is how Candace Owens learned how to do this. I understand what this looks like now. Hardcore gamer gators even think that Quinn Harper or both uh, or both run elaborate ruses to try to convince the world they are under online attack when in fact they aren't. Part of what makes these theories so hard to believe is that if you Google either of their names, you can see a disturbing number of people have been utterly obsessed with both women, particularly Quinn, since Gamergate broke. Given the sheer heat that has been blasted at them for so long, it would be bizarre if they hadn't been hit by wave after wave of abuse and threats. In a DM statement, Harper said in, in part, this isn't the first project that was likely well-intentioned but lacked research into both technology as well as the psychology of harassment without the collective knowledge base and support of the pre-existing members of the online anti-harassment community anyone entering this new tech sector is going to have a difficult time this is a striking example of how successfully gamergate has turned two of its targets owens new to the controversy and just trying to understand more about the women who criticized her, quickly became convinced that Quinn and Harper were some sort of internet supervillains. Lacking the full context of the Gamergate story and reading a trove of information, which all seemed to confirm her suspicions, Owens fell in deeper. She felt her instincts about Quinn had been confirmed. I started re reading obviously more into it about how people had suspected this for a while, that Quinn is actually making money, she said, and that Randy doxes people. They had a tweet saved of her calling for someone's address and phone number. This refers to an instance in which Harper uh, released personal information about a debt collector. These two are like cohorts. They're going back and forth. They have a plan, and each of them has a network. They have a big following. I still do not know, admittedly, why Randy Lee Harper is. I do not know why I got an open letter from her. All I know is that she crafted the entire thing for me. Their network runs deep, so who knows? I don't know how deep this thing goes. 
part of why are you guys tweeting on my behalf right now? Jesus Christ. How yeah, how how are how are people typing and and as I'm reading this at the same time? I don't know. I don't know how this all goes. Apparently I'm multitasking. Part of what made this train wreck so depressing to watch is that almost all of it flows directly out of Owen's lack of understanding of this particular slice of the internet. She may have worked with various anti-bullying organizations like the Tyler Clementi Foundation in the run-up to her Kickstarter launch, but it was clear from our conversations that she just hadn't been exposed to this kind of aggressive swarming mobs that define online harassment in 2016. It is really jarring when you're exposed to it for the first time, I will say that. When we are talking about social autopsy, our primary examples of behavior she was hoping to catalog were people who left threatening Facebook comments about celebrities like Caitlyn Jenner. She thought it was important to discover, for example, the names of teachers who left viciously cruel comments against Jenner. Yes, people leave mean comments on Facebook, and yes, there is plenty of old-school cyberbullying that should be addressed, but online harassment these days is much more complicated than that, much more complicated even than the brutal, scary version Owens experienced growing up. Understanding it requires an understanding a lot about anonymity, about troll culture, about who is likely to be a target in the first place. And it doesn't appear Owens or her colleagues at Social Autopsy came in with any of that background. Now, listen, I can understand that Candace Owens at 26 was probably young and stupid. I think we can all wrap our head around that. No offense to anyone in their mid 20s or early 20s, but you're young and stupid. And as you get older, you will get life experience and you'll learn. But it seems, but this is also reflecting to me a person that doesn't adequately look into things or consider consequences when she does them. As if the internet was trying to hammer the point home. Owens and her organization are now experiencing exactly the sort of harassment her organization didn't seem to fully take into account. The snowballing shaming, which can come when an unpopular idea is put under a searing spotlight and the internet decides the most important thing in the world to do, at least for the next day or so, or until some other even more deserving victim comes along, is to mock and threaten and dehumanize whoever is responsible for the idea. Owen's somewhat naive understanding of what constitutes online harassment ended up backfiring on her in some pretty brutal ways. For instance, she got fixated on the word docs, meaning that Quinn had used uh, had used it in their tense phone call. Within a few hours of having spoken to Zoe Quinn and upset her, a board had been started on um, on 4chan, an anonymous thread, and they are now telling the gamers that we are going to be doxing them, doxing minors, she said. The word dox is being thrown around. I've never heard it. People who have seen our campaign, we worked on it for two months. People gave us feedback. We had a whole article written about it in the Connecticut Post on the front page. And yet, she said, not a single person had used the word dox in the run-up to the Kickstarter launch. Now we're seeing the word dox in this chain. Immediately in my head, I go, Interesting word. Heard it first from Zoe. So because Quinn had mentioned doxing and then a bunch of other people had brought it up as well in the context of the Kickstarter campaign that at the very least strongly hinted that it would be doxing people by unmasking people and revealing where they work, Candace became convinced that Quinn was behind all the complaints. She's tweeting about her again. Yes, guys, it is movie night tonight in the supporter discord. If you would like to join us for a movie night, activelyunwoke.com slash support. Join us in locals. Join us on Patreon. Join us in uh, in uh, uh, on Substack and uh, you can get access to movie night as well. This happened over and over again. Owens kept mentioning pieces of evidence that were just, well, the way things work online. But to her, this could only be a sign of a campaign run by Quinn and Harper against her. Owens repeatedly circled back to the sheer volume of anti-social autopsy content she'd witnessed. And the timing of it, a firestorm of vitriol that followed the pattern of every Twitter and Reddit pylon in the last several years, where someone says or does something, there's a brief pause while news of it spreads, and then there's a sudden explosion. Owens found it suspicious that there had been a long lag between the Kickstarter going up and the harassment wave, and that so many people seem profoundly upset with their project. I'm thinking, even if I disagree with something that was on Kickstarter, the amount of time people are investing should have been an immediate red flag to me, she said. No matter what you disagree with, 
You do not text and post for 24 hours regarding it unless you have a personal investment in the matter. So basically, Candace Owens got really confused about what was happening and tried to blame it on these two people when, in fact, Candace Owens just had a really bad idea to build a website that was basically doxing people and harassing people. And that's how Candace Owens got her start on the Internet. God. These people are unbelievable. All right, guys. Well, let me just check in on Candace Owens' Twitter to see if she's engaged in any more nonsense since we started this stream. We're going to be wrapping up here in a second. No, it looks like she's not right now anyway. But guys, I'm going to recommend you keep an eye on this. Honestly, uh, Candace Owens is going to lose her shit on um on nicole arbor sometime this week i promise you it is going to happen and it is very likely to happen tomorrow night so what's happening tomorrow night tomorrow night steven crowder is on tim pool i will be having a steven crowder tells all on tim pool watch party starting on this channel about 7 30 tomorrow night listen man you can go watch the stream directly as well that's that's fine that's an option if you want to support what tim is doing i would encourage you to go watch his stream directly as well but if you want to hang out with me and people in the chat and comment on what steven crowder has to say then you can join us for a watch party. I'm sniping that stream. We're going to watch it here live as well. And we're going to have a grand old time. For those of you in my locals community, yes, this means that we are postponing the start of our community supporter call until probably around 10, 10, 15 at night. I know that's a little bit later, but you know what? Extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. And we're going to watch this shit go down live. But I'm telling you guys, do not trust Candace Owens and do not trust anyone that is supporting her because Nicole Arbor brought receipts. She brought receipts. She's been smeared for a long time. My heart really does go out to her because like I said, one of the reasons that, um, that, I'm, Oh, I just got a notification of Candace Owens podcast. Oh, <laughs> did Candace post something? Oh, man. But, guys, like, do not support people like this. I'm going to say it. Like, the Daily Wire is showing their true colors. And I'm living for it. Because I've been telling people this for two fucking years. And I think it's important people see the truth. So, guys, we will be doing this watch party tomorrow. I will look forward to seeing you again. Um, take care. Have a great rest of your day. And I will see people in about four hours for movie night. We're watching room, uh, room with a view in my supporter discord. And again, if you want to join the supporter discord, uh, actively on woke.com slash support, come and join my locals community. You can get the direct link there. Um, you can get it on my sub stack. You can get it in a whole bunch of different places, but we're looking forward to movie night later. Um, and let's just have a chill rest of the day. All right. Just chill, relax. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a